Hey there, I'm Eric, and I decided to get a spot welder. I did this because one of my batteries had some zombie cells on it. I tried resurrecting them, but no, no go. So I'm gonna basically need the spot welder to be able to repair it, and maybe one day build a battery of my own if I can find the cells at the right price and good enough quality. So what I ended up getting is the glitter spot welder, or as they call it, precision welding machine. <laughs> um, unlike the cheaper ones that are sold on Amazon and AliExpress and eBay, those all run off batteries, which I wanted something to last me a little bit longer than possibly five years. So this one runs on uh, Two large capacitors are inside of it. Capacitors usually don't go bad like the batteries do. So there's a the machine and it comes totally uncharged. So it has the welding pen like this. I wanted the fixed one because, well, you kind of want them uniform the same distance apart from each other. So I went with this one. Of course, you have to go with a higher model to get this accessory. Otherwise, it's two wires. You, you just poke down on it. I think that's to put put together rows like that if you're building a 6s right there it would easily work to space them apart for you as you're attacking them on it's like it adds a little bit of a gap to them which isn't necessarily always often it has some strips down inside there a foot pedal that's to engage it um really didn't want to go the automatic route i don't know just makes me feel a little bit more comfortable having control of when it triggers so that's a foot pedal there simple trigger should be the power supply to charge it. And this is the unit. I attach this onto it and bring it down like an arm. Um, let's see if I can actually attach this. So yeah, I guess it would stand up in that mode. Okay, yeah, there's just two screws on the front here and then this cover came out. And then that's where these two probes. There are which would go assumably ah, right down in there like that. And I'm not even sure if you get a screw them. Don't know. Hey, look at that. All right, now I put the little cover back on, I would assume. Bing, bada boom, where'd my two screws go? So basically this one, once I figure out how to get the lever attached here, I don't think it's anything real difficult. There we go. I think I also need the, yeah, two probes also need attached to it. But this one, I pretty much put the batteries there and then I can lean them down. This is great for uh, smaller packs or cells for this upcoming repair on a future video it'll i'll be able to definitely use this all the way except for the last attachments then i'm gonna have to go to the pin just for the simple fact that you can't get that much of a battery back in and on here but i'll try first and then if not i'll use the pen for that so now you gotta have the allen key hey they actually gave the allen key that's nice of them so you get the allen key and it looks like four probes in there so I'll take a couple of the probes and figure out how to go in here. Very vague instructions, yeah. I would assume I just loosen the Allen key here. Yep, slides up and right into the end there. And pretty much just like that, boom. The, yeah, let's see. Those are the spring adjustments up there up top. All right. So there we go. I got my basic unit there. And I'm going to charge it up. And I know this takes at least a half an hour for it to charge up and be able to start working. So I'm going to plug it in and go out and read these instructions and let this charge up. Apparently, the uh, they give you the world's shortest power supply wow that's um it's like two and a half feet <laughs> i'm gonna get an extension cord too all right i've had a charger for quite a while now it's at about 
well 5.8 would be 100% so it's near full there it's ready to go so I'm gonna test it out see how this goes this is definitely something new for me I got 18650 battery out of my uh, battery pack I'm repairing now this is from a bad group I'm gonna first try on all this on the negative side pretty much the whole battery is all negative so there's no real risk on this side on the Positive side, uh, well, under all this, this is negative, but negative and positive there right next to each other. So it's a little bit more risk on that side. So for my practice, I'm going to start on this side <laughs> to make everything a little safer. Battery is near dead, but nowhere completely dead and done. They never really are unless you somehow can discharge them to zero volts. But I'm going to try on this and see how this goes. This is... This is nickel plated steel here, the strips that came with. This is a uh, 0.15. I also have some 0.1, but this should work. I may have to end up reinforcing it a little bit on the battery. I think they used uh, closer to two and it could have been pure nickel. So I'm gonna have to probably add up more pathways when I do that. But for all this video, for all the test purposes, this should determine how well this works. I know it's direct current, but just for <laughs> paranoid sakes, I did get a, rubber glove here all right now i got them on the proper hands here so i just take where oh i can get nowhere near that <laughs> need to place something underneath her <laughs> so here on the instructions we got 0.15 nickel plated steel we need to be to 10 to 12 t it says uh, yeah, we're at 25. <laughs> Good thing we didn't go that high. Okay, we'll go 12. All right, and here we go. First, first one here. And that. Didn't do anything? That didn't do nada. And that was the recommended settings there. Let's try, let's try it again here. Actually seen a spark that time. No, more stuck to the probes than. So their setting sucks. So let's go up a bit. Um, Still nada. All right, let's go up to 18, I guess. Nada, nothing again. Well, crap a doodle. Um, let's try 20. Okay, I got a little bit more of a solid stand here. Stuck to the probes, but it did not weld. Um, going up to 25 now. Nothing. All right, I'm uh, all the way up at 30 now. See if that has any effect. So that was around 30 and there was absolutely, yeah, she didn't weld at all. All right, let's try, we go up to 33 now. And not a, she welded the, huh, aren't you sure why that one didn't stick? Blasted through. Aha, uh -huh. I think we may have got our first stick here. All right, uh, three, three, something occurred. This is the second time I blasted that same hole. Not, not a very good weld at all. Let's try that again. Uh, 
one kind of stuck there. Yeah, less of a spark, and it went up a slightly higher there. Interesting. But no stick whatsoever. Hmm. This is definitely why you uh, test a bunch <laughs> who are trying to actually do it on a pack that you're building. Because, yeah, it's a little bit harder than it first looks. All right, I'm gonna try 39 here with about even pressure there. And it says pressure is an important thing too. All right, happy 4th of July. Yeah, make sure you don't have gasoline sitting around when you're doing this. So. Yep, Sam. That was a matter of time. Ah, fudge. Well, we popped one. Ah! Oh, think I didn't clean the tip often enough. Yeah, I get like one good connection and very light pressure. But damn. Doing a double here, light pressure. But oop. Yeah, that sucked balls. Light pressure at 36 T with one and <laughs> two sparks. It's a pretty good weld. Uh, got a slight blow through on on the one weld. All right, let's see if I can. Ugh. Okay, yeah, that's that's definitely got good strength there. There we go. Got it off. Yeah, nice. And those holes are caused by uh, rip through. I'm gonna try to lower the T just slightly because I do got a slight blast through on the one side, so. Yep, seems to be on the setting 30 there. And per each spot weld, I'm doing two shots of it. I wait about a second or two in between each shot. And that seems to be my best bet with these particular strips here. Now that I know my setting, I'm going to see how hard it is now to attach a piece of strip over a piece of strip. Because I'm going to have to do some overlaying to get the proper amps out of it. So easy peasy. Just use one of my uh, many recycled pieces here, and we're going to try the same technique and do the same thing. I'm going to do two bangs at 30 and three, three sets of them. And yeah, that seems to be a good technique to attaching the strip on top of the strip there. So, nice. I guess that's time to take the uh, wrapper off there. All right, this is a keeper. Just had to figure out uh, basically my materials and what worked best with them. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Looks like the Glitter 801B works good. Uh, the settings aren't quite where they thought they said they would be. Um, I found that the 30T instead of the 12T works better, and I have to hit it twice with that, but. That's what these particular uh, nickel plated uh, steel strips here at 1.5. Um, I was not up at the highest setting. Uh, let's see, 30T is what I was at, and it'll go up to, wow, okay, 99T. So you pretty much got to play with your settings, find your right, right amount of pressure that you're adding, and the right T for the material you're using on the, on the battery. You can find this down in the description below. And thanks for watching, and hopefully one of my next videos is going to be uh, me repairing this little battery I have off here to my side. Thanks for watching, and until next time, try to have a good day.
Yep.